reading from reading Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. O Lord my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. O Lord, you brought me up from the grave. You spared me from going down into the pit. Sing to the Lord, you saints of his. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favour lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. O Lord, when you favoured me, you made my mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What gain is there in my destruction, in my going down into the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. That my heart may sing to you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Well, at uh, one moment, they had a beautiful family of six. And uh, by all accounts... Um, those uh, children made up a beautiful family indeed. A wonderful family that was close together, loved each other. Not a perfect family, we can be sure, but nonetheless a very close family. And then out of the blue, everything changed in a moment. In a fraction of a second, it was all different for Danny and Layla Abdallah. I don't know if you remember the occasion just a year ago. The end of a hot summer day. And the children of the Abdallah family were in, in their home together with cousins. Having had a good day, they were given permission to go down to a local shop to get some ice cream. An innocent little thing to go and get some ice cream just down the road. Moments later, as they were making their way to the shop, a drunken driver lost control, mounted the curb and went straight through the group of children. Killed four straight away, others were injured seriously. But three of them were from the one family, the Abdallah family. Danny and Layla experienced what you and I could only, well, well, I don't think we could imagine, could we? But we could only describe as being crushing, I mean crushing grief. But just recently, they had a special commemoration to remember their children and their cousin who died. And they inaugurated a new day, a new day of memory. And you know what they called it? I forgive day. I in terms of self. And then the word forgive isn't the word forgive, it's the number four for the number of children that died. I forgive. And of course the whole focus of it was that in the midst of their tragedy and their, their crushing grief, they had learnt that the only way they could deal with it was to forgive the driver. And they spoke uh, on that inauguration day, a very big day, the Prime Minister was there, the Premier of, of New South Wales was there. Um, huge occasion, was on the, on the news. And, um, and if you want to follow it, you can see the whole, whole service on YouTube, the I Forgive service. And of course, what they're, they're looking at was, yes, they had this crushing grief, but if they were to hold on to that grief and hold on to resentment and, and anger, uh, that would kill them. And so they, they found the only way they could rebuild their lives was through forgiveness. And uh, they thought that that's what the world needs to hear, that's what Australia needs to hear, what the world needs to hear. There's so much anger and resentment and hatred. You see that with regard to the violence on, on the roads the road rage. Uh, people fly off at the, the smallest thing. Um, what we need to relearn is forgiveness, humility and forgiveness. But of course, it's not only true for them, it's also true for you and I, isn't it? We may be quite content with where life is at the moment. We may think everything is honky-dory and we may, may be making plans with regard to holidays, what we might be doing in, in the future with regard to retirement. Uh, what we might be doing in, in terms of the future as a church concerning the gospel air mission. But in an instant, everything can change. 
And what we felt in terms of was in our power to do, see that's the thing, in our power to do, all of a sudden we realised how powerless we are. So many things outside of us can completely wreak havoc with our plans and our aspirations and with our future. And things can just turn upside down like it did for the Abdallahs. In Proverbs uh, 30 verses 8 to 9, we find a very important prayer. Let me read it to you. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. You hear that? Don't give me poverty. Don't, don't allow me to be poor. But Lord, also don't allow me to be rich. <clears throat> give me only my daily bread. In other words, give me only what I need today. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, who's the Lord? Did you pick that up? If I'm too rich, I feel I can do anything. It's all in my power. My security is in my riches. And then I can say, well, who's the Lord? I don't need him. Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. You know, those are the dangers of the two extremes. I've become too rich. I, I don't need God. I can get on with my life. I've got power because I've got riches. Or if I'm too poor, I might steal and therefore dishonor God. Interesting prayer, isn't it? Just give me, Lord, what I need. Just give me what I need. And so when things suddenly go wrong and things change in an instant, we're reminded that we live not by our power, but as we sang a moment ago, our life, our breath is in the hands of God. Not in our hands, it's in the hands of God. In uh, preparing the high school lesson for the, the children in Mekathara, <clears throat> I went to a lot of stuff on YouTube with regard to the Abdallah family and what Danny and Layla had been saying. And in one part <coughs> of what they were saying, uh, they expressed this understanding that they live by grace alone. Danny, uh, speaking of uh, his understanding of what took place that day, said, something happened there bigger than me and Layla. So I surrendered to God. I said, Lord, this is something bigger than me. You are in control. That's quite something, isn't it? Overwhelmed, crushed. He speaks of, of almost dying inside. And yet he realises something big is going on. He realises that in spite of everything, God is in control. And then Layla said in one part, God wanted to take my kids at that time and in this way, this is what made us forgive. They realised it wasn't so much what the driver had done but what was in the hands of God. God wanted their kids home and in that way. And so they were prepared to forgive the driver because they realised the whole situation was bigger than all of them, the driver and themselves. It was in the hands of God. And so as we live our lives, knowing that at times we too think that it's in our hands to do what we want to do and we make our plans, we forget to, to say and, and, and approach life the way James tells us. If the Lord wills, we will do this or that. If the Lord wills, we'll go to that city and do this business. So often we forget to say, Lord willing, if the Lord wills. And so it's good for us to turn to this psalm because in it, uh, David speaks of an instance in his life where he forgot that lesson. He forgot that he wasn't invincible. And then the Lord taught him a lesson that you and I need to keep in mind. <clears throat> and it's good too because this psalm is so appropriate in terms of uh, our sharing the Lord's Supper this morning. And so um, what we find here is a call to praise the Lord. In verse 1 it says, I will exalt you, O Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. I will exalt you. In other words, I will praise you, I will worship you. Why? Because you lifted me out of the depths. So like the Abdallah family, David here speaks of a place he was that was dark and deep. He was in despair. And uh, we read there it was on account of enemies gloating over him. 
in those who are surrounding him, wanting his life or wanting his power, threatening him. And uh, the Lord, he sees there, lifted him out of the depths. How grave was David's situation? We know how grave the Abdallah family situation is and was. <clears throat> but what about David's? Well, when you turn to verse 9, we get an indication. O oh Lord, you brought me up from the grave. Now, speaking of death, he, he felt dead. You brought me up from the grave. You spared me from going down into the pit. Sing to the Lord, you saints of his. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favour lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. What gain is there in my destruction, in my going down into the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? So when you look at those words, you can see David was in a pretty dark place. And yet the psalm begins by asking us to, to praise and exalt the Lord. In Psalm 30, 11 to 12, we see why that is. You turn my wailing into dancing. You remove my sackcloth and clothe me with joy that my heart may sing to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. You know what sackcloth was, don't you? In that time, in that tradition, if you were in mourning, um, not just for someone who died, but even if you were in a grievous situation, if you felt that the hand of God was heavy on you, you would put a really coarse cloth over your head and you'll even <clears throat> get the dust of the earth or even ashes from a fire. And you would cast that over yourself. It was an extreme expression of grief and sorrow. And what does David say, say here? You remove my sackcloth. The reason for my grief, the reason for my being low, the reason I felt in such despair, you remove my sackcloth. And you clothe me with joy. You, you, you see the, the, the transition from coarse sackcloth covered with dust or ashes and now clothed instead with joy. God did that for David. As I said, the threat to David was his enemies who were prepared to gloat over him. In the Lord's Supper that we're about to celebrate this morning, we're reminded of our greatest enemies. Now, thankfully, here in Australia, we're, we're not being persecuted as the, uh, the Christians were, or as David was, um, you know, Christians in early times, although things are getting worse for Christians today. But our greatest enemies, regardless of what's happening in our lives, our greatest enemies, the Bible tells us, are death and Satan. When you turn to Hebrews, that's what Scripture tells us. Jesus came to deal with death and Satan. And the Lord's Supper reminds us that these are our two greatest enemies. That without Christ coming into the world, without what we're going to remember on Good Friday, Christ dying on the cross, then we would be eternally lost. We would go down to the grave and we would go to hell, the Bible tells us. Satan and death, as it were, are waiting to gloat over our death. They want to triumph over us. But go to Hebrews 2, go to Hebrews 4, and we read that Jesus came, he shed our humanity so that by his death he may overcome death and Satan, that he might free us. The Lord's Supper reminds us of the same thing David needed to be reminded of. He was powerless in himself. In God alone was his strength. And as we take the Lord's Supper later on, that's what we're going to remember. Our greatest enemies that want to gloat over us, death and Satan, Jesus has dealt with them. Not we, Jesus has. Our strength for whatever we face in life and our hope for an eternal future are nowhere to be found within ourselves. Nowhere to be found in how many times we go to church or how, how often we read our Bible or how fervently we pray. It's not to be found in any of those things. It's found in Christ alone. And that's what David forgot with regard to his relationship with God. There was a time when he felt everything was in his hands. In Psalm 30, verse 6, he says, When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. 
We know that, don't we? There are times where everything, like I said a moment ago, is honky-dory. Everything's going well, and we think we've got everything in control. There was a time when David felt that way. I'm secure. I'm in a good position. And then he says, I will never be shaken. Of course, what he forgot was his current position in which he felt so secure wasn't something of his doing. It was a gift God had given him. You know, when you take a look at, at David being chosen as the one to become the next king, you know, when Samuel came to his, his father's uh, household and all the brothers passed by and God said, no, no, none of those. Is there any other? Yeah, there's one kid out looking after the sheep. That was God at work in his life. And when he went to Saul's uh, uh, rooms and comforted Saul and Saul turned against him, who preserved his life? Who kept him from death from, at Saul's hands? It was God. Who made him so successful in battle so that the, the people sung his praises more so than Saul's praises, which is what made Saul jealous? God made him successful in battle. And who raised him to the throne and gave him success over all his enemies? God did. So when David said, I am secure, I will never be shaken, he was dishonouring God. He was claiming that it was all his and all by his power. And then we read in, in, uh, in Psalm 30 that God's anger turned against David and God hid himself uh, from David. In other words, God distanced himself from David and then David's security plummeted. And then he had these enemies working against him. That's why it says in verse 5, For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favour lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. One moment, he thought everything was in his hands. God said, right, I need to remind you of something. This is what you need to remember. Your strength is not in you. Your strength is in me. And so God withdrew and everything went pear-shaped. And then David pleads for mercy, he writes in Psalm 30. He pleaded to God for mercy. And then he discovered that God's anger against him was only momentary. The moment he pleaded for mercy, the moment he asked for forgiveness, the Lord was there ready to forgive. That's what it says in Psalm 38 and 10. To you, O Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, be my help. It's a lesson we all need to remember. The Psalms are there for us, recorded, so that we too can learn from the lessons and the experiences of past saints. And so what the psalmist does Realising that his sackcloth, that, that garment of sackcloth was replaced with the garment of joy because of the Lord forgiving him. He wants us then to, to realise that when we go through hardship, it's not because God doesn't care, but as he discovered going through the hardship he went through, when he was you know, covering himself with sackcloth, when he felt God's anger against him, when that happens in our life, it's not because the Lord doesn't care, but because the Lord loves us because we're his kids. You know, in Hebrews, we find a, a, a wonderful passage there that uh, Rob ra uh, read earlier. In Hebrews 12, 7, it says, Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons, for what son is not disciplined by his father? You know, in our society... Um, police and, and um, teachers and, and other people who have to deal with other people's kids are so often saying these days that the parents don't care. And it's seen in the behaviour of the children towards those in authority. The, chi the, the, the children aren't disciplined at home. They aren't taught respect. And so they become wayward and they get into big trouble and eventually many of them get in trouble with the police and end up in jail. 
endure hardship as discipline, God is treating you as sons. In other words, the Lord cares for those in his family. Unlike uh, the fathers of our life, who so often get discipline wrong, the Lord never gets it wrong. The Lord is a perfect father. It says in Hebrews 12, 10 and 11, Our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good, that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. So when we go through hardship, whatever it might be, the loss of a job, uh, financial difficulties, get COVID, <laughs> whatever hardship we, that we might endure, the Lord says, treat it as discipline. Don't think, what's the Lord doing here? But say, oh, the Lord loves me. He's reminding me that my strength, my, my, my current situation, tomorrow and my eternal future, they're not in my hands, they're in the... Lord's hands. My hope is not in myself. My hope's not in the doctors. My hope's not in the medicines. While God uses those things, they're important, but my hope ultimately is in God. In Him I have my life, my breath. The Abdallahs spoke of this in their own life with regard to the tragedy they went through. Layla Abdallah speaks of uh, the reason why she was able to forgive the driver who killed her children. She addressed that question specifically. She was asked it many times. How have you been able to find it in your heart to forgive? And her words are, having experienced God's forgiveness for my sins, how could I withhold forgiveness from this driver? This is the way God has dealt with me. How could I not deal that way with this driver? She realised what God had done for her, even though, and she says, even though she was undeserving. And therefore, she could not live in judgment upon this person who had suffered, uh, caused so much harm to their family. And then she speaks of her hope with regard to her children. She said, my kids have died, but this means that they died in this life, but they are still alive in the afterlife with Jesus and Mary and the saints, and they are living a good life. No despair there, is there? There's grief <coughs> and the sense of loss because of the separation. But in her heart, drawing her strength from God, strength that allows her to forgive this driver, um, she also knows where her children are. They're not dead. They're dead with regard to having died this side but they're alive now because they're with the Lord. See, that's what happens when you realise your life, your current and your future prospects are not in your hands, but in the Lord's hands. That all things are in his control. David wrote, Sing to the Lord, you saints of his, praise his holy name. The Abdallahs are seeking to get the whole nation to recognise who God is. They're giving a wonderful witness and testimony. Uh, Layla especially spoke openly so much of her love for Jesus and how it was empowering her and her husband Danny to inaugurate this day of I forgive. But what about you and me? As we have the Lord's Supper today, let's be reminded of our powerlessness why did Jesus come? Why did he die on the cross? Because we were powerless. None of us can reconcile ourselves to God. Only through what Jesus did could we be called the children of God. Did we become the children of God? Here today, the Lord's Supper, let's be reminded that whatever we're facing today, whatever pit it is that we're looking into, Whatever hardships that might come our way, our strength is not in ourselves. Our strength is in God alone. As we sang in a moment ago, and I'll finish with these words, as morning dawns and day awakes, 
to you I bring my need. O gracious God, my source of strength, in you I live and breathe. Each hour is yours by wisdom planned. Note that. Layla spoke of that, didn't she? Her children died when they did, in the way they did, because God was taking them home. Each hour is yours by wisdom planned. Each deed empowered by sovereign hands. Renew my spirit. Help me stand. Be glorified today. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we give you thanks. We thank you, Lord, for this reminder from the psalm. We thank you also for the testimony of the Abdallah family, especially Danny and Layla. We thank you for the day that they've inaugurated, I Forgive Day. And we ask, Lord, that indeed through this supper too, you will help us to praise you and give you thanks in this wonderful reminder of our powerlessness, but also of your grace, your mercy, displayed to us on the cross of Jesus Christ. We thank you for this reminder that we breathe and live and stand only by your strength. And so, Lord, whatever it is that we face in life, either today or tomorrow or some future time, whatever hardship may come our way, even as deep and as grievous as what the Abdullahs have gone through and are still going through, we pray, Father, that we might find peace and strength in you alone. We ask, Lord, that you'll continue to be with this family. We ask that you'll watch over them, Lord. Continue to cause them to hold on to you in faith in Christ alone. And we pray that you'll, you'll meet with them every day, supplying their needs. Continue to work through their testimony that others may turn to you and find the peace that you have given to them. This we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. <laughs>